The Florida Podcast Network, the voice of Florida. From Mallory Square in Key West to the Governor's Mansion in Tallahassee and all points beyond, you're listening to the Florida Beer Podcast, powered by FloridaBeerBlog.com. Your source for all things related to the craft beer community in the Sunshine State. And now your host, Dave Butler. Here we go again with another episode of the Florida Beer Podcast, powered by FloridaBeerBlog.com. This is Dave, your host and author. And yes, we are going to be talking about dieting, sort of. What's nice about some diets and the person that we're going to be interviewing first is the fact that most good diets don't mean you have to cut everything out. You just have to understand how to work your life and your exercise and your diet so that you can enjoy a beer or two. And we're going to be chatting with health conscious author, rugby raconteur, and all-around interesting video blogger Gary Greenberg. He's also the author of The Beer Diet, How to Drink Beer and Not Gain Weight. So we will chat with him about the book, about his background, and about how a diet can actually be a good part of a healthy diet. We do apologize there were a couple little audio hiccups as we recorded this, which is a great time to mention that we are still looking for sponsors and donations. If you would like a Patreon shout-out, or want to help the Florida Beer Podcast get better equipment for better interviews, feel free to contact us. Our information will be at the end of the show. Thank you so much, and enjoy. It seems, from reading your bio and reading the book, that you came into beer specifically through rugby and since i have friends that are rugby players is that really where you discovered beer and just kind of went hand in hand and kind of went full force i I actually had started drinking beer before i played rugby but i i wasn't really that much into it when i started playing rugby of course rugby is a violent game and after the practices after the games you sit and and exercise yourself with beer (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and it's just kind of a tradition. It's a long time tradition. We did it after every practice at Penn State. We go to the first bar and everybody put a dollar into a pitcher. And, you know, in those days, 20 bucks could get you drinking all night pretty much. And they just keep filling up the pitchers. <laughs> Even after the dollars ran out, they keep filling them up for us usually. And we play darts. And uh, it was not only just, you know, the beer, but it was the camaraderie. It was just it was some of my most fond memories is, is after a Tuesday or Thursday being all muddy in your rugby clothes. I don't remember exactly when, but I think I actually, the first really good beer I had was a low and brow from Zurich that kind of ruined my taste buds for a lot of American beers to some degree. Once I started drinking imports, I, I liked them more than the American beers. Well, obviously, the domestic beer market has changed quite a bit since you first started drinking beers. What kinds of things have you seen that have sort of sort of grown up and that you've been really excited about as a beer drinker? I, you know, I'm really impressed with the whole you know craft beer industry and how it's taken off since the millennium. For that, I traveled around Europe when I was young, and I remember going to Germany. And in Germany, every little town had its own brewery. And I thought that was great. I mean, beers he'd never heard of. I, you know, I would try in that never seen or heard of since, but uh, they were really good. They were all a little bit different, a lot of dark beers. And I thought, boy, wouldn't that be great if all, if all these little towns in America had their own brewery? Well, guess what? They do now. And they're producing not only, you know, a single type of beer like most of these other places, but they're producing a wide variety of beers and they keep expanding the culinary uh, parameters of it. I mean, you're getting all of these uh, sour beers and wild yeast beers and culinary beers. So it's really very exciting time to be a beer drinker. Absolutely. And growing up, I very distinctly remember 
being in my health class in middle school, talking about different beverages and how alcohol in general and beer was empty calories and had absolutely zero nutritional value whatsoever. And it seems that recently that consensus and that idea has changed a little bit. Is that kind of what you've seen in your writings and whatnot? Well, actually, you know, when you're looking at empty calories, you know, if you want to drink a Coca-Cola, now you're talking totally empty calories. When you're drinking a beer, beer has been around for a long, long time. It's made with grains. It's, it's a very good drink. It's, it's got a lot of, it's got a lot of antioxidants in it from the hops. It's got good energy in it from the malts. Uh, the yeast has lots of great properties. So unfortunately, you know, most of the commercial beers, these things get heated out of it through pasteurization. But if you're a home brewer, you get a lot of these benefits from it. You get B vitamins, you get, you know, uh, a, lot of, a lot of different nutrients from beer. It's very nutritious, sometimes too nutritious because there's a lot of calories in it. <laughs> Obviously, the calories and the nutrition and everything sort of dovetailed in creating your book, The Beer Diet, How to Drink Beer and Not Gain Weight, which is something that is sort of near and dear to my heart, making sure that I do the latter. And I have not done a great job of that. If you've ever met me, how did this book come to be? It's I've never seen a book like it before. I'm a journalist, a lifelong journalist. And in 2015, I got laid off my job with the tabloids, the supermarket tabloids. Uh, I was a staff writer and an editor there for a while. Yeah, I want to pause. You actually wrote for one of my favorite magazines, the Weekly World News. And if you have never experienced the joy of Bat Boy coming down and running for Congress with aliens in his background, that was just the place to be. So I, I must I must bow to you for that. Okay, the Weekly World News was the most fun to work for because it was actually a satire magazine. People still would believe some of those stories. They'd come up to me and say, well, that's not true, is it? You know what I'm saying? If you have to ask, <laughs> that's pretty bad. That's but uh, yeah, that was the fun one. I mostly worked for Globe and the National Enquirer. And they, I did a lot of true crime stories. I, I tried to keep away from a lot of the celebrity dirt because that's not really my thing. But I had to do whatever was thrown at me. But anyway, I got laid off in 2015. And the first freelance work I got was doing natural health stories uh, for this newsletter, Health Radar. Because I've always been kind of health conscious being an athlete and all, I really took to it. And I've learned a lot over the years about health. After you hit your like mid-40s, you know, your metabolism really starts to slow down. So you can continue to eat and drink you normally do and have your same exercise routines and everything and you put on weight. I was able to manage to find a way around that. And after a while, I just decided to write a book about it. Awesome. And it, it's a neat book because you know, obviously I would expect for a normal book of this kind to just say, don't touch it. Whereas you are very strongly encouraging moderation, not just because of the calories, but you'll also go in and you'll describe, you know, what it does to your body, what the moderation will actually do and so forth. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, without with uh, beer, I mean, the main problem with beer is alcohol because alcohol, as I say, in my book, alcohol is, is, is poison, but it's fun, you know? So it's mainly to mitigate the alcohol consumption. Uh, so that's why I tell people they should you know, drink slowly, you know, have a glass of water or something between your beers if you can. And just keep in mind that every beer that you drink is, is going to be, you know, poisoning you to some degree. So, you know, go a little easier than you might. So it's all about moderation. It's about doing other things like exercising and eating you know, the rest of your diet as healthy as you can. And that will prolong your ability to drink and enjoy beer, which is the whole idea. I want to be able to drink beer. If I'm a hundred years old, I want to be able to drink a couple of beers. And, you know, if you don't take care of yourself, you can't do that. Which is great. One of the things that I definitely found interesting is you mentioned the, specifically the alcohol by volume and how long it generally takes. And so if you're going to do something like Pliny the Elder, you know, one of the foremost double IPAs in the country, it's going to take a little bit longer. Maybe you'll have to do a little bit more to let it sort of work its way through the system than if you did, you know, kind of like a Hefeweizen or something. Yeah. I think, you know, the key to everything is knowledge to be aware of that, to know that, okay, this beer is pretty strong. It's a seven, eight, nine, 10% or up, 
you know, beer, if you drink it too fast, your liver is not going to be able to keep up with the processing of the alcohol. It builds up in your bloodstream. And before you know it, you got a DUI. <laughs> if you can pace yourself a little bit, you can be aware that drinking a Pliny might take your liver two hours to process rather than one. Drinking it slowly and having a nice glass of water between. If you don't make it to two hours, if you want to have something after one hour, go ahead, but have a something a little lighter. You know, just be aware of what you're putting in your body, whether it's beer, whether it's food, any other kind of drink. And you know, for me, I'd rather drink beer than like say Coca-Cola or sugary iced tea or fruit juice. So I don't drink that stuff anymore. I drink basically I drink beer, water maybe some green tea uh, <laughs> I drink, and coffee. I don't, I really don't drink anything other than those products because the other ones will kind of steal away some of your beer. <laughs> and it's funny that you mentioned food because one of the first things that I noticed and actually the first chapter that I read is you have a number of recipes in the back of the book and it's not just recipes for general food. They're all soups. You know, some of them have meats and some of them are veggie laden. And we've already done the Italian wedding soup recipe, which turned out very well. Why specifically soups? Uh, it just so happened. I was a, when I was in college, I worked in a deli and I've always been a deli guy. And for 30 years, every day for lunch, I'd have a probably close to a quarter pound of cold cuts. As I learned more about health, I realized that's not really so good for you. And while I was still working for the tabloids, the lady who would get all the books in to review, she'd give them out at the end of the year. So one year there was one called, I, tried, I can't think of the name right now, but it was about healthy soups. And I got that book and I saw some of the recipes, including that Italian wedding recipe. And I didn't miss the sandwiches. Uh, most of them are pretty healthy. I don't have a lot of you know, heavy cream-based soups. They're mostly pretty vegetable and there are some meat, it's maybe for flavor, just a little bit of sausage or a little bit of beef or whatever. And I don't miss the sandwiches. I have a, a bowl of soup and a bowl of fruit, and I'm good to go for the day. That's, so that's, why, that's why it's soups. And uh, soup, you know, it's funny. I started cooking soups right before I started cooking up beer. <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> almost the same thing. You're boiling up stuff for, for a while. It takes a little bit of time and you got to let it age a little bit. It's all, you know, there's a lot of parallels. So it's kind of funny that I ended up being a soup cooker and a, a beer maker. I will say I'm surprised that there aren't any homebrew recipes in the book or any soup recipes that feature some sort of beer in the ingredients. I always kind of consider putting beer in food kind of a waste of the beer. Maybe there's some flavor. I, I haven't really explored that. As far as the uh, beer recipes go, I'm, I'm not really a, a, an expert brewer, even though I've been doing it 10 years. I still do extract, and it's a little bit limited as to what you can do. I'm using mainly the same you know, liquid extracts. There's three or four different varieties I use, and maybe you know a dozen different hops I use and a couple different yeasts and you, there's still plenty of combinations I can make everything from kind of a darker you know kind of uh, porter type beer to something that is almost golden but I kind of prefer these kind of amberish red ales that are uh, you know got a little bit of, of a kick to them Awesome. Um, now you are based in Boca, so you're here in South Florida and Palm Beach County. Uh, I know that in the book and elsewhere, you've mentioned one of your favorite breweries in the area is Barrel of Monks, which I guess harkens back to your days of cycling around Europe, enjoying those beers. What other kinds of beers or breweries from the state are you really a big fan of? Or Barrel on Monks, I like because I like Belgian beers and their Quadraphonic is really, really good. It's one of my favorite beers. I like almost every brewery. I like, obviously, Funky Buddha. Their Hop Gun, I think, is one of the top IPAs around. I like IPAs. I like Red Ales, Prosperity Brewery. I ran into them before they had even opened. They were doing an Oktoberfest over at the Beer Garden, downtown Boca. I just happened to be biking around with my wife and we saw there's this beer festival. We didn't even know it was, it was going to be there. And we, it was right around noon when it was opening. These guys, uh, Ken and Cameron, Cameron was a brewer, Ken was the owner. And they had made a Marzon, like an Imperial Marzon. And uh, I tasted that and I was sold. And they ended <laughs> up winning that contest. And they were going up against 
at least a dozen other, you know, fairly well-established local, you know, South Florida breweries, and they they took the first prize. So, uh, so I like Prosperity. They're kind of in my neighborhood. Saltwater in Delray, twenty-six degrees. I mean, which, whatever ones I go to, I like because it just, <laughs> it, you know you don't know what you're going to get when you go to a new brewery. It's like it's like when you're on the interstate and you're traveling. You know, do you want to stop at a McDonald's or Burger King, or you want to stop at a local yokel place where you walk yeah. in and say, you know, what's the special today? Well, that that's what I like about having all these different breweries, uh, and and you get to try a lot of beers that you wouldn't necessarily want to try and, and expand your tastes. So the best place to get the beer diet, where should people go for more information and to order? It's available right now just on Amazon and I'm um, working on a deal with Ingram Spark to, part, to start putting it into bookstores. But that's going to take a little bit of time. So the best place to go is amazon.com. There's also my website, which is the beer diet, but it's got hyphens in it because there's another website called the beer diet without hyphens. So it's beer diet with hyphens. You'll see my, my book cover right on that site. If you don't see it, you're not at the right beer diet <laughs> site. And that'll take you also, it's got links to the Amazon page as well as my beer diet guy, uh, YouTube channel. Yeah. Cause you've been doing a number of interesting videos about your explorations with health and working out and beer and so forth. Yeah, I really like doing that. I, I typically sit outside my uh, by my turtle pen every you know afternoon with a beer. You know, after I have a beer or two, I start filming and just talk about whatever comes to mind. And sometimes my wife comes in. I have a dog who loves to chew up beer cans, and she's pretty funny. I have my turtles Stella and Dottie. I even have one coming up with my bird Baba. Nice. That's pretty funny. I like critters, you know, so uh, <laughs> I like sitting outside and, and you just get so relaxed, you know, being around nature. And then you have a beard to, to bring you down from, you know, a hard day at work writing. That's my delight. That's amazing. Well, Gary, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. We do appreciate it. And I'm going to keep going through some more of those recipes as I continue reading the book. So thank you so much. Yes, well, it's been a pleasure, and uh, I look forward to getting together with you in person. And just like Gary said, his book is available on Amazon.com right now, or you can go to the-beer-diet.com for more information, to see him, to get a link to his YouTube channel, and so much more. Well, we are still in the middle of COVID-19, and unfortunately, rates are going up. But since places are starting to reopen, we are going to continue on with playing our audio recorded before the quarantine hit and shut everything down. The next interview that we have for you is from Orlando, and this is Ellipsis Brewing. They are a particular darling of the Orlando craft beer scene. And they are in Orlando. In fact, you'll probably hear at least one plane fly overhead as we were right in the landing path of Orlando International Airport. They are that close. But they make some phenomenal beers and have been doing so for quite some time. So we sat down with Robert McKee. He is the head brewer and chief operating officer of Ellipsis Brewing, one of three people that founded the company. And we'll talk about that company the Orlando craft beer scene in general, and possibly talk about how they might have gotten in a little bit of trouble with Nintendo. Enjoy. And are you from Orlando? I'm actually from St. Cloud, born and raised, grew up in St. Cloud. I only just recently uh, moved up to Orlando. I guess my question is, so Ellipsis has been open for about two years now. Just over Just, two years, yep. Yeah. How long have you been looking at and sort of been in the Orlando brewing scene? I guess if I could go back a little bit further than that, if that's okay. Yeah, go for it. So basically, uh, about five, six years ago, me and a group of friends, we all, we, we'd all had been married and had children and decided that we needed a brocation. So just guys, 
go out and do what guys do, climb mountains, drink beer, eat pizza, and just be guys for seven days straight. Luckily, our, our livers survived, so we, we made it. <laughs> went to the northeast area. We went everywhere from um, Portsmouth up to Portland, Maine, mm -hmm. down to New York, and a lot of places in between. Climb Mount Washington, and my friends at the time were really into craft beer, and I was getting into craft beer, but like, you know, I just kind of knew who Shipyard was, and yeah. just kind of, I had heard of Allagash, never really had it before, and so this was exciting for me. So we go up there, and we start visiting all these breweries, and then we go to Allagash Brewing, and we're like, all right, cool, we're down at Allagash. Hey guys, there's a couple little breweries at the end of the road here called Bissell Brothers, and foundation <laughs> we're like all right cool we've never heard of them but let's sling in let's stop just little by. places yeah yeah, yeah no yeah, and, well, i mean when i say little like they were really little they were in this little tiny imagine a storage unit it looked like a storage unit. this is the size of a storage unit. very very small uh -huh. and th there was no tap room it was just a little a little wood cut out where you could order a beer through the wood and you could sit outside of the wooden tables or at the old wire spool sitting there you know we had some bissell brothers and Foundation was right next door. Mm -hmm. And then there was another brewery around the back side, but we, they were closed that day. Gotcha. So we didn't get to visit that brewery, but we got to visit these two breweries. And I thought it was the coolest thing ever that these were very, very, very small breweries. Nothing like the shipyards and the Allagash we had yeah. just seen. Yeah. And I was like, this is incredible. Like, these people are so cool. They're next to each other. Everyone's friendly. Like, the products are phenomenal. And so I, I turned to my now business partner, Matthew, mm -hmm. and I was like, hey, I was like, you ever thought about opening a brewery? And he's like, uh, no, Rob. And I'm like, no, for real, Matt, like, we can do this. Like, this is so cool. Like, I thought breweries were this big, massive thing, but they're not. They can be small, small businesses. And he's like, just stop talking. We're not doing it. <laughs> so I come back down to Florida after the brocation had ended. And then another friend of mine approached me, asked me if I could go help him get his dad's truck tow it with my truck and I was like sure where is it at he's like oh it's in Valdosta I'm like oh you mean like Valdosta Georgia he's like yeah I'm like all right cool like it's Saturday I've got nothing going on let's ride to Valdosta and back on the way up I asked him the same question you ever thought about opening a brewery and he's like every single day of my life came back and started working on it from there you know one thing led to another you know none of us knew how to brew beer mm -hmm. so that was an important thing <laughs> luckily Kenny had gotten a homebrew kit for his birthday or Christmas, I think. Mm -hmm. We just trial and error, started learning how to brew beer. Well, the first the first beers sucked really badly. In fact, I have some. Usually some, do. I have some in some bottles. We're gonna try them. I don't suggest it, but we could. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and pass on that. Yeah. Since nah, nah, nah. The look on your face is telling me that was the right choice. Today. Yeah. There's a reason they're in bottles. Okay. There's a reason they're in bottles. No. Yeah, and we just uh, we kept working at it, and then uh, you know it, it progressed from there. It was hey, this isn't too bad. Hey, I would drink this. And then, hey, yeah, I, I would buy this. And then we, we did a festival, the Orlando Beer Festival. We're like, let's try it out. Let's see what random people who don't know us, strangers are. Because your friends are going to tell you it's great. Absolutely. Because they're your friends. Yeah. Let's go try this out on random strangers. We were, we were kind of, had to take a step back. Like, wow, I wasn't expecting this kind of response. I wasn't expecting people to be like, oh, my God, this is amazing. This is, I love this. I want to buy this. Where can I buy this? And we're like, uh, we're just some homebrewers. Um, but maybe one day, I don't know. That was kind of the turning point that made us say, hey, maybe we should start looking at actually opening a brewery. Like, people really do kind of like what we're doing. The trip kind of started with us taking a trip to New England. While we were up there, we noticed that a prevalent style of beer was emerging up in the New England area that we hadn't really seen yet down here. Yeah. Not to say that people weren't doing it, but just we hadn't really seen that, you know, in our area. Uh, we don't get out much. Remember the whole family kids thing? Exactly. So we want to kind of bring a slice of that back down here and be in the New England style of IPA. So that's kind of why we got so prevalent. Yeah, so it, it was just, it was on from there. It was on from there, you know, find a place, find a place nearby, you know. We all we all live here, we were all born, raised here, grew up here, and been here our whole lives. It's an interesting location because if you can hear sort of in the background, those are planes taking off from Orlando International, and you're close enough to where you could almost be the secondary phone one. Was that intentional or was it just sort of a happy accident? So no, we actually weren't looking at this area at all. 
we were actually looking at, I mean, a wide variety of areas. You know, we, we looked at like the Mills District, that area. We looked at the downtown Mills District. We looked at west of I-4 by the soccer stadium. We even looked at Sand Lake and Orange Blossom Trail. We looked all over Orlando. We wanted to be somewhat closer towards the central or south side of Orlando because of where we all live. Uh -huh. And this was kind of an untouched market. There wasn't a whole lot down in this area, you know? Yeah. At that time, it was just Orlando Brewing. So then the guy I was working with at the Realty, he's like, hey, look, he's like, I got one more location. He's like, uh, my, my boss owns the location. It's his building. You want to go take a look at it? It's over by the airport. I'm like, yeah, sure. Why not, man? Came out here and this was a cold, dark shell. There was nothing here at all. It's just a big, giant open space. We started talking and I'm like, you know what? Like, this could be really cool. It's kind of close to where I live. It's close to where we all live, really. Uh -huh. it's, it's only, you know, two blocks off of Cimarron which is an area that Orlando has been building up steadily for the last 10 years and an area that's going to continue to grow and evolve. Yeah, it was a happy accident, I guess you could say, you know, because we were like, no, this really, really, really works out. So now we love we love the fact that we're right next, right next to the airport, you know, it's a eight minutes to the terminal, you know. Nice. Were you the first tenants in this building? No. Or I guess in this space? Yes. Okay, we're, yes. so, and it sounds like you were almost able to see it be constructed oh yeah because like i said there's a, a what they call a cold dark shell no lights no electricity a single water line ran overhead that is it <laughs> i mean literally that wall didn't exist that's behind you it was just the concrete walls and then it opened up for the rest of the building nice there was one tent on the very end of the building they were mm -hmm. there and gotcha. i think the second one maybe yeah the second one was there kind of they're in construction so yeah, we got to build it exactly how we, we wanted it. I was going to say, because you basically had carte blanche at this point. Not even just the tanks and drainage, but even the wall separating the brewing space from the tap room. So it, it, it was a blank piece of paper. You know, it, it was actually really nice. It, it was actually really nice to be able to, you know, it's tough building, putting every single thing in yourself. But it's nice at the end of the day where there's no like, oh, well, I wish this wall wasn't here. Well, guess what? We put it there. <laughs> and in that time, even in the couple of years that you opened, there's been a number of breweries that have opened up. Your you know, Castle Church isn't too terribly far from you. In terms of the Orlando beer scene, how healthy would you say things are here? I mean, we're definitely growing. You know, I think Orlando's still got plenty of room for, for more opportunities, for more breweries. That would be great. When we start comparing ourselves to areas like the Tampa St. Pete area, mm -hmm. I think we've got a long ways to go. People talk a lot about market market saturation. People, this mythological bubble, like when's the bubble going to pop? And you're like, <laughs> this isn't the housing market. There's not really a bubble that's just going to pop. And, you know, millions of people will be like, I'm done drinking beer. No, I, I think it's I, I think it's it's good. It's growing. It's grown so much since we started looking at it. it, it it's amazing when... You know, you have this period of time where, like, you're the new guy, right? Like, you just opened. You're the newest one. And then people start opening up after you, and you're like, this is great. Like, there's so many more people that had the same idea I did. I'm not the last one to the ball game. Like, there's still so many people who are so interested in opening breweries. So it's, uh, it's good to see. It slowed down a little bit over the last year. I know we've still got a few more that are working on opening. Uh -huh. I know. We just had the one open up just last weekend up in Sanford. Genetic? Yes. Yeah, Genetic yeah, just yeah, opened in Sanford. Genetic. Yeah, really bad names. They, they just opened. I, I know the Dees brothers are working on something, mm -hmm. so they're going to open soon, hopefully. It's great. Is that all going to be sort of downtown? Because like you mentioned, the Milk District, that seems to be sort of the hub that Mills Milk District, just outside of what was traditionally downtown. That seems to be where a lot of the energy is getting focused. That's definitely a happening neighborhood, you know? I mean, you can you can walk down the street and stumble into a bar, you know, every, every you know, 100 feet, you know, there's a bar or a brewery in that mm -hmm. area. So, yeah, it's definitely a very happy area. It's there for very upbeat. Interesting. And since, obviously, this is sort of a moot point since we're talking at 3 p.m. on a Tuesday and your tap room is crowded, you can't believe, but how has the reception been since you opened? That's been phenomenal. It's been, it's been beyond expectations. You know, the people of Orlando has really, really embraced us and really supported us a lot. So that, that's been wonderful, you know. 
Now, notice behind the bar, it looks like you won a Best Brewery Award in 2017, which means that you won it without being a year old yet. We hadn't even opened yet, actually. Oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We won two, actually, before we opened. So we won the, the Smash Festival, hosted by Hourglass in Longwood. Mm -hmm. And that was cool because you win this gigantic contraption of a trophy. <laughs> and um, they're like, they chuckle. They're like, here you go. You're supposed to put this in your tap room that doesn't exist yet. I'm like, yeah, we have an empty spot, bro. <laughs> so it actually sat in my house for most of, sat, it was in my house for most of the time. So that was fun, and then we did the, uh, the Orlando Beer Festival mm. again. You know, we returned back there after we uh, a couple years after we went there the first time around. We won People's Choice at that event Excellent. as well, uh, and that was right before we opened. Excellent. Yeah, what is the festival atmosphere like here in Central Florida? Obviously, Tampa, St. Pete, you mentioned this, its own separate beast, but I know Windermere's got a good one, downtown has one, and obviously, you mentioned the Smash Festival, the single malt and single hop. That's sort of a signature event for the state. Is it usually pretty strong when you go there? A lot of people that are interested in craft beer and the community or over being to a drunk fest. Yeah, I think you said it right. Like, one thing I like about the festivals here in Orlando is that they're a lot more intimate. We meet a lot of enthusiasts. We meet a lot of people who are getting into craft beer and mm -hmm. a lot of people are excited about craft beer. But they're much more intimate, you know? It's not thousands of people who are trampling over top of each other to find the whales, you know? Which is cool, I think it's a lot of fun. I, I love Hunapu Day, it's a lot of fun, I love going down there. I, I wish they would invite me down there. I don't know. Intent if somebody's yeah, listening. I, I, don't, I don't know if you're, if you're listening. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so it's not cool, but like I said, these are these are more quiet, more intimate, intimate festivals, which are a lot of fun. Like the Smash Festival, is super, super cool. That's the one that, like all the brewers go out to, and we all go out and hang out and talk. So that's a lot of fun there yeah. as well. Yeah, no, I, I love the smaller, intimate festivals like 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 Deland, like Windermere. Uh -huh. We've got one coming up in Cocoa Beach, at Cocoa Village. That should be a fun one too. You know, the the wing competition coming up in uh, Brevard County as well. Mm -hmm. So those are cool. I like those because you get to interact, meet with you know people who live in your community, and it's a lot of fun. Excellent, but obviously being in Orlando, tourism is you know, the 800-pound gorilla of this area. Do you get a lot of people that are here because they're going to visit the parks or going to visit the beaches, and they look out for you, kind of like how you and your friends were on your location? Yeah, it's 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 amazing just how many people we get who come in from out of state. And they're like, yeah, like I heard I have to visit you guys, and you guys are right by the airport, so that's very convenient, you know. Yeah. And in fact, the group of gentlemen I was uh, I was uh, helping in the front, you know, they're all from Minnesota, you know, coming down. So that's that's really cool. We get so many people from all over the state of Florida who come, or all over from the country, to visit us. Yeah, that's that's a lot of fun. Yeah, I noticed they were taking several four packs. Yeah. And some growlers home with them. Yeah, yeah, is, yeah, yeah. And I was noticing I. I guess I have to mention this. There's a very strong video game motif mm -hmm. at Ellipsis. Yeah, oh yeah. I you know, got t-shirts with Samus Aran with the keg instead of her classic oh, arm yeah. cannon. And yeah, yeah, yeah. The barrel with cloud and... Oh, the best one is uh, Link. Link's shield uh -huh. is actually a manway door to a fermenter. <laughs> and he's, instead of the master sword, he's got the... Bash paddle in hand. <laughs> he's got That's... the bash paddle, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I guess first of all, when are you expecting the cease and desist? Any day now. <laughs> okay, so at least you know it's coming. And where is this coming from? Where is this? Yeah, so we sort of happen. We all we all grew up in the '90s. We all grew up playing video games. You know, whether it was PlayStation or Nintendo or, or PC, we, we jammed out on video games. And so we we wanted that to reflect in, in our brewery in our tap room. So that's why so many beers have 90s references. Mm -hmm. And that's why Ferrona Vi from EverQuest is painted on the wall. Mm -hmm. And now we have, like you said, this, the Mash Brothers characters on the wall. Um, they're supposed to be Mash Brothers. The, the shirts were supposed to be Mash Bro. Brothers. The printer goofed. Okay, gotcha. The printer goofed to put Smash Brothers. And we were like, oh, crap. But this was hours <laughs> before they were supposed to go on sale. So we're like, oh, my God. Uh, shoot. Uh, 
let's just sell it. And yeah, if, like you said, the cease and desist comes for stuff. Happens, hey, happens. Really sorry about that. It wasn't <laughs> supposed to be smash. It was going to be mash, which is a brewer's term. I hope you understand that. <laughs> yeah. There are actually several sort of events. I know Megacon is downtown or Orlando every year. And then I know the Orlando Science Center does a video game sort of event. Have you partnered with them about those events since you have such a nice tight sort of we we haven't vision. we haven't i would love to we, we actually were supposed to host a smash brothers tournament <laughs> just keeps getting deeper doesn't it yeah, yeah, yeah. it works yeah, yeah we were actually supposed to host one i think in the end that they decided that our venue wasn't large enough if you can believe that you got a sizable venue and obviously you've got plenty of parking out especially in the back there's plenty of space for whatever you need they were talking several hundred people and you know you had to have video game consoles and monitors all over the place and at the end i was like i want to so 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 badly but this is huge this is like you need to be like a resort type thing or something so ultimately we didn't get to do it but, that's a shame uh, yeah I, I would love to in fact I, I i've been to the Atlanta science center when they do their vr events they just did mm -hmm. it uh two weeks ago i think it was mm -hmm. yeah and i'd love to be a partner or something like that you know because That'd be really cool. Excellent. I don't know if I can really talk about it, but I guess I will anyways. We're working on setting up a pop-up arcade, actually. That's cool. Uh, so there's these companies that they just have a box truck full of arcade machines. Yeah. And so we just want to roll them out and just set up arcade machines all over the place and, you know, play old school Pac-Man, you know, <laughs> Mortal Kombat and stuff. That's perfect. So let's obviously talk about the beer since you just had a contingency of people from, what was it, Milwaukee that heard about you. I guess, what were the beers that they were hearing about and the kind of things you really like to, to really want to be known for coming out of your 10-barrel system? I think we're probably most popularly known for our New England style of IPAs. Uh, it has definitely been our number one seller since, since we've gotten Inception going. Mm -hmm. Last year we kind of started, and this year we're kind of trying to go a little bit more focus on it. We really want to focus more on not only our our, our big stouts and our treated stouts, and but also our, our Berliners as well. We want to do a lot more Florida Weiss, a lot more dessert Berliners, stuff like that. And of the four packs that they were taken back with them, two of them, I know the ones with the video game characters on them, those were more Florida Weiss. So yeah, one of those was... Uh, Smashing Hops, which is a double New England IPA, mm -hmm. and the other one was Princess Peach, which is one of those Berliners as well. Okay. Yeah. It's confusing because we did two different themes in the backgrounds. Mm -hmm. So, you, like in my mind, it was like, oh, so, so this theme is the IPAs and this theme is the Berliners. <laughs> no, it's actually one and one, one and one. But yeah, so if you don't know if you're not sure like the cans are really cool. So, the, like I said, there's two different themes that go on in the can. Mm -hmm. Berry Can and Electric Hops were a theme and then Smashing Hops and uh, Princess Peach were another theme. So the characters actually, the cans butt up to each other okay. and form a scene. So like the characters like fighting each other. Interesting. Yeah, the shirts are the same thing. So. That's kind of neat. Yeah. That's kind of neat. I'll have to take a closer look. Yeah, yeah. Super cool. <laughs> One of the things that you had mentioned on your brocation were you went to those couple of breweries that were small. They weren't the huge heavy industrial complex. They weren't shipping to everywhere and making mm -hmm. sure that they had sort of a countrywide footprint or even regional such as Allagash. With Ellipsis, what are you really focusing on? Because I've noticed that with a number of new breweries, they're really not as interested in distribution as the ones that opened up four, five, six years ago are. We're just focused on making the best beer we can make. That's been the goal since day one. You know, we we don't have any investors. Uh, there's nobody who sits in the back and writes a check. It's just us, man. So we're just average working people. And if you had any investors, that's the plane that they're taking to go somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, they're probably gonna go meet with some other brewer who wants to open up and do mass distribution and sell out, you know? It's not why we got into this thing, you know? So, you know, if we stay right where we're at, I'm happy. If we grow from here, that's cool, as long as it's organic and, and natural growth, because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, the focus has to remain on the beer and, and making good beer. It's not worth it for me to send beer a far distance away, whether it's North Florida, South Florida, or 
whether it's New Hampshire, if if the quality doesn't remain consistent, you know that that's what's important. So if people are interested in ellipsis, obviously, somebody figured it out. Where can people go to find more information? I, you know, uh, our Facebook and our Instagram are gonna have the most up to date, packed information. Yeah, if you want to see what's going on, we have a website. It works. Our tap list is up to date. Just because, just because it syncs with the one in the tap room. Oh, nice. How <laughs> difficult is that? I mean, because I know that there are companies that'll do that, but do you have a lot of, I guess, the hardcore beer enthusiasts and the regulars that hawk on that, like vultures, making sure that everything is up to date and they want to come in and tap the phone, this is what you say you have, I want this one. I don't think so. Because like I said, we, because it all syncs, so... Uh, we, it stays a pretty pretty up to date, you know, unless a keg, you know, just blue or something like that. Then what you see on on tap menu or what you see on our website, it's going to be up to date with with what what we actually have. Where the confusions lie is sometimes we'll like put a teaser on our Facebook, uh -huh. and they'll come in like, oh, I want to have this beer. And you're like, oh, that actually doesn't come out until like next week or whatever, you know. <laughs> but, like, sorry, I didn't mean to cause confusion. We're just trying to like let people know what's coming up, you yeah. know. Yeah. But they can, you can find that on social media, obviously. Last question. Obviously, I do have to ask about the name because it is not video game related. Oh, my mom gave it to me. Oh, Rob, yeah. Rob, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah you she gave it a good me. job. Okay. <sighs> <laughs> wow. We just go, went ahead and went there. Okay. <laughs> All right. Ellipsis brewing. Ellipsis, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, where does ellipsis come from, right? <laughs> Yeah, sure. So, <laughs> so basically, we had a we had a concept, we had an idea, and that was that beer is different. Like, for instance, you can be working out drinking water at the same time, right? Yeah. You can be at your desk jamming on the keyboard, sipping some coffee while crunching out emails, right? Yeah. But beer is different. Beer, you you kind of pause for a moment and. You enjoy that beer, you know? So we always thought that there was always a reason why you were drinking a certain beer. You know, like you're outside mowing the yard and it's, it's 100 degrees outside and you go back inside. What are you grabbing? Uh, 100 degrees and go back inside? Half a Yeah, something light. Uh, wit, you know, maybe a nice pale ale, right? Cream ale or... Uh, Cream, yeah. Exactly, you have something light, right? So, yeah. You know, you, you, you're like, I'm drinking this beer because it's hot outside. Yeah. Or I'm drinking this beer because I'm having dinner on a Friday night. That's why I'm drinking this barrel aged stout right now. Um, so I always thought that there was a there's a reason why you drink certain beers, and you always had a natural pause in life to, to enjoy them. But we just didn't know how to articulate that. Yeah. We didn't know what that exactly meant. One day I was talking to uh, my good friend Stephen, and he was like, why don't you just call yourself ellipsis. I'm like, what do you mean, man? He's, you know, ellipsis, the three little dots at the end of the sentence. It's the natural pause in speaking. Okay. And I'm like, hey, that's a great idea. And you've incorporated those three dots into the logo. Yeah, and everything we do has the three dots. So, yeah, that's where it came from. He came up with the name ellipsis, and we were just like, that's that's brilliant, man. So uh, that's how we've kind of we've kind of ran with it. So, yeah. Interesting. Well, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it, and my compliments to your mom on the excellent name. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, to be fair, it is my father's name as well. Okay. So, really just kind of copied and recycled it, you know. Gotcha. Then I named my son the same thing as well. So, we're kind of unoriginal on that, on, a, on that field of things. <laughs> thank you so much for your time. Anytime, bro. Anytime. Ellipsis has some absolutely fantastic beers. And if you do a quick search on floridabeerblog.com, we've been lucky enough to review them a few times. One time being the beers that I had while I was there for my interview. And one of those beers was Bright Hulk Green and tasted absolutely amazing. And then the other thing they are known for is Milk District, which is their New England IPA with lactose. And I recommend that you all read the article not just to understand a little bit more about a fantastic beer, but also get a little bit of Orlando history. Because if you're not from Orlando, the term Milk District 
It is very odd. But if you know exactly what it is, then you have grown up in O-Town. The Florida Beer Podcast is a production of Florida Beer Media and the Florida Podcast Network. If you want to join the Florida Podcast Network, I recommend you do so very, very soon because there's a lot of great news that's coming down the pipeline. And trust me, you want to be the first to know about all these amazing new shows that are going to be coming pretty soon. Best way to do that is to go onto our Facebook page. Just search for FPN Insiders, and you'll be the first one to know about all that information. You'll be able to leave hints and tips and information. Tell us about the places that you've been to, the beers that you've tried, and so much more. Once again, that is FPN Insiders on Facebook. As for Florida Beer Media, you can find us at our longtime home, floridabeerblog.com, where you will find information on Ellipsis Brewing and a bunch of other breweries that we've been focusing on and talking about in the past. We are available on Instagram and Twitter at Florida Beer Blog. We're FL Beer Blog on Facebook, where we hold the Sunshine State Happy Hour, a live show every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern. Or you can email us at floridabeerblog at gmail.com. We definitely recommend that you try to connect with us. If you have any interest in sponsoring us or just want to tell us about the latest brewery that you've been to, go right ahead. Our field producer is Steve Pacala. Our executive producer in Grand High Poobah is Jimmy Lagonier. Make sure to like us, rate us, subscribe to us if you're on Apple or another podcasting app that allows ratings. Give us a nice five-star review. It's the easiest way for you to help us out, spread the word, and start spreading information about the great craft beer here in the state of Florida. Thank you so much for listening. We will be back soon with another episode. Stay safe out there and make sure to keep drinking Florida craft.